Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, Ralph here. Uh, welcome to the uh, RHCSA Tip of the Week. Uh, today, uh, we're going to look at the uh, the at daemon and the cron daemon. Both of these are listed on the exam objectives. Uh, as I always say, this shouldn't take too long, but we'll see. It takes as long as it takes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we have the, uh, the exam objectives. And if I search for, let's say, cron, you'll see here that we have under the deploy, configure, and maintain systems, we have schedule tasks using at and cron. Okay, so generally speaking, one time tasks, that would be the at daemon, and anything that you want to schedule hourly, weekly, monthly, daily, those types of things, that would be handled by cron. Uh, in production, you're probably going to be more and better served by the cron daemon than uh, necessarily by the at daemon, but both of them are. Uh, listed as exam objectives, so we're going to go through uh, both. All right, so we're connected in here to a RHEL 71 uh, box, and I'm going to go ahead and full screen my view here. Probably the uh, the first thing we should do now. Generally, uh, the at daemon and the cron daemon will be installed and enabled as part of a default installation, but it never hurts to check that. So I'll run System Control, and then let's check the status. So we'll check the status of at D and cron D here. And they're both active and running. And just to make sure that they're starting uh, persistently, I'll run system control and then the is enabled for both the uh, at daemon and the cron daemon. All right, so both of them are actively running. Uh, currently, both of them are set to start on boot, so they're enabled services. So from that perspective, everything looks good. Uh, let's start with with at. Uh, the general syntax for uh, for at is at and then specifying a time. And you could pass a script uh, to apt at that point, you know, using input redirection, or uh, you could simply uh, type in what you want it to do. So, for a quick example here, I'll check my terminal. So I'm on PTS zero, and if we check the time here, it's twenty. 2012. Uh, so if I say at uh, 20, I'll go with 14 so I can do this a little bit slower. So at 2014, and you'll see I'm in the at view here, and then I'll go ahead and echo, let's just echo at test, and then we'll redirect that to my, my terminal here just to verify that it does uh, in fact uh, work. All right, when I'm done, and I could enter in multiple lines of input here, I just go ahead and select Control D, and that takes me out of there. Now I should be able to list my jobs with the at minus L. So I've got one job there, and if I want to view the contents of that, uh, at minus C, and then the job ID, which in this case looks like it's job ID one. And then you'll see there's the environment, and then finally down there at the bottom, we get that echo at test. Uh, to dev PTS zero. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my screen here. Check how much time I have here. So we got about 35 seconds, 38 seconds before that actually fires off. Uh, there's a couple other at commands. You could use at RM to remove a job from the list. And we're talking about security with that. And this is gonna be the same for both really at and cron. If I do a listing of uh, Etsy at star here, you'll see that there's a file on the system called at.deny. So the way that it works, if I want to deny uh, at to particular users on the system, then I can simply just populate the at.deny with the names of the users that I want to exclude from being able to use at. So there's my test. So there it fired off. You see that it worked perfectly fine, and that's my one-time scheduled job there. Now, if we look at the contents of the at.deny file currently, you'll see that it's empty. Now, if I create an at.allow file, so if I were to create a file in Etsy called at.allow, then that would override uh, the at.deny. So at.deny is a implicit allow, explicit deny. If you create the allow file, then you'll have a explicit allow and an implicit deny, meaning that everybody not listed in the at.allow file will not be able or allowed to use at on the system. That's basically it with that. Um, pretty straightforward in terms of using it. Use the schedule one-time tasks. You know, you can do a little research in terms of the different 
uh, time and date formats that it accepts, but it's a pretty basic uh, service. Now, if we take a look at Cron, I'm going to clear my screen. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a listing on the Etsy, and then let's say Cronstar. So we sort of have, with Cron, we basically have user Crons, and then we also have our system Crons. And so you'll see here that in Etsy, we have a cron.deny file. If I cat the contents of that file, so if we cat the contents of cron.deny, you'll see, oh, I can't. Let me go ahead and get out to root here. So if I cat the contents of Etsy cron.deny, you'll see that right now it's an empty file. So again, that means that that's an explicit deny. And so it's an implicit allow. Because that file's empty, everybody on the system is allowed to use cron right now. I could create a file called cron.allow. If I do that, then it becomes an explicit allow and an implicit deny. And so everyone not listed in cron allow would not have access to cron. But right now, we have the cron.deny, and that's the default. And that's going to uh, be an empty file uh, by default. All right, now, <clears throat> so we have the system, we have a file called Etsy CronTab. Now, if I, if we look at the contents of that, so this is the CronTab file. Okay, and so the syntax, and actually I'm gonna clear my screen, take that up to the top. So the syntax for the CronTab file, okay, is minutes, and so star would be every minute, hour, star again would be every hour, Day of the month, month, and then finally day of the week, and then the then the command. Okay. Now this is the system cron tab, so there's some environment settings here. Sets the shell to bin bash, sets the path, and sets mail messages to root. Uh, by default, cron will generate a mail message with the output of any command in cron tab, and then also if you have errors inside of cron. But you'll notice that there's not really anything going on here except a uh, a number of commented lines. Now that syntax of minute, hour, day, day of month, month, and day of week, if you want to pull up that information, there are, we have a cron tab file, which we're looking at right here, and we also have a cron tab command. So, you know, if you do a man minus K for cron tab, you'll see here that you've got the command cron tab. If you just type in man cron tab, That'll give you the syntax for the actual cron tab command, which we'll talk more about in a little bit when we talk about user cron tabs. And if I want to see the file, well, that'll be in section five of the man pages, then I would say man five uh, cron tab. So that's going to have the syntax for cron. Uh, beyond that, uh, it's also going to have uh, some definitions about uh, how we can set up asterisks for all, or we can do uh, ranges okay so you could do comma delimited and that would be on minute one minute two or hour one hour two hour five hour nine you can say you know zero through four you can do slash and then 15 and that would be every 15 minutes so a number of different ways that we can configure this and so for more detailed information just consult the uh, man five cron tab or the uh, cron tab file from uh, section five of the uh, the man pages. But coming back here to our system crons. Uh, let's see, so ls etsy cron star. You'll see here that there are some directories in the system. We have cron.daily, uh, we have cron.hourly, we have cron.monthly, and you could take a script uh, or an executable and drop it into one of those directories and then it would be processed you know, daily, hourly, or monthly, or weekly. There's also a weekly uh, folder there. Uh, in the cron.d directory, you'll see that there is a zero hourly there. And so if we take a quick look at that, so the file in Etsy, uh, cron.d, and then the zero hourly. So you'll see that defines the environment. And the one thing that it does is it runs the contents of the cron.hourly directory. So in cron, hourly we have a call to anacron and then a yum process there so anacron is a sort of like is a service very much like cron except that it has some additional features so in terms of 
Uh, when you use Anacron, if you if the system was in maintenance mode or shut down during a scheduled task, it can reclaim that task, or, or I should say rerun uh, that particular task. So really the big thing that's going on in the hourly script, you know, in the hourly directory there is it's calling Anacron. And there is an Anacron tab file. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail with that, but if we, you know, just look at the contents of it. So again, that's in Etsy, and it's the Anacron tab file. And you'll see here, that's where actually the contents of Cron Daily, Cron Weekly, and Cron Monthly are being run. Uh, so really, Cron itself is just on the hour, you know, running uh, this Anacron script, and that's what's actually managing those other uh, directories. All right, now, a couple other things run. Uh, we have the sysstat, so we kind of take a look at that. Uh, that's our old SAR scripts, but um, again, Etsy, cron.d, and then sysstat. And so you'll see every 10 minutes it's running the SA1 script. Uh, looks like once a day, or excuse me, hourly, the beginning of the hour. Okay, it is running the SA1 script again, and then here at 11.53 at night, it's running the SA2 script. And then that's just collecting system statistics, so uh, tools like SAR and SADF can run uh, reports on it. So those are the system crons, but if we get into the, uh, the user crons, so when we talk about, um, you know, creating a user cron tab, we're going to use the cron tab command. So if I do a cron tab minus minus help, all right. In order to create a cron tab file, first time you create it, what you're going to do is you're going to do a cron tab minus E, and that is going to create your cron tab file and open it up in the default editor. What I always like to do the first time I create a user cron tab file is I just go ahead and do colon R Etsy cron tab, and then I, <laughs> I delete a few lines here. And I just keep the, uh, the example job definition there uh, for, so that I have my syntax right here in the file. So there's my minute, hour, day, so I know exactly what I'm entering in there. So if you were to create a task, and I'm just going to, uh, I'll just create a quick task that runs, let's say, I'm just gonna run it every minute. Uh, so if I say star, eh, we'll say star slash two. So that'll be every two minutes. Uh, of every hour, of every day of the month, of every month, of every day of the week, zero through six. Um, actually, Sunday can be zero or uh, seven. And then you would enter in your task. Now, if you, I'll enter in a task that'll generate an error. Okay, so I'll just say query there. And then I'll do another task here, running every two minutes. That just generates some output, but I don't redirect the output in any way. So I'll say uh, ls uh, etsy samba and one more task here. And I'm just going to go ahead and say let's do an ls of um, just do an ls of etsy and then we're going to redirect that to root because I'm logged in as root right now so I'm making a cron tab file for root here uh, root and let's just say we'll call that file etsy.out so that's my cron tab file now the the log for cron is in uh, var log and I'm gonna go ahead and change directories here to uh, var log you'll see here that I've got my cron log and if I tail the end of that log so I'll go ahead and tail cron here you'll see it's pretty verbose very verbose actually so right here this is where I edited my file as root okay. and then this is where I and then this is the execution of the three lines uh, that are inside the file if I list the home directory of root you'll see that I now have this etsy.out file and if I look at my mail, you'll see I got two mail messages from the from the cron daemon. Uh, the first mail message here is an indication it's an error. So anytime you have an error in your syntax or something like that with cron, uh, you'll receive a mail message on that. And then the other mail message, 
Okay. It's just the contents of the output. So I read because I just elected not to um, redirect the output. What happens is, is the output then gets mailed to the uh, to the user. Now again, coming back to our cron tab command here, the cron tab minus L will list the cron tab file for my user. Uh, cron tab minus R would delete it, okay, and then cron tab minus E would allow me to uh, execute that. Now, if I exit back to student, student also has the ability to make a cron tab file. So I say cron tab uh, minus E. Again, that'll bring me to the default editor. Again, I'll do a colon R and pull in the contents of Etsy cron tab. Delete those top lines that set the environment and then just leave those lines there. And again, I just like to do that for the syntax, totally uh, unrequired to uh, to do that. So again, I can schedule a task here Oops. to run every two minutes on, let's say, hours 18 through 23, uh, day of the month. No, I'm not going to worry about that. So every day of the month, every month, every day of the week. And again, I'll just, uh, I mean, we could call a script. I mean, we can really do uh, anything we want from here, but let's just list the contents of, do a long listing. Yeah, sure. Do a long listing of the contents of home student. And we'll redirect that to, let's say home student dirt out out now again we're if we go back to root for a second here and if I tail the log file and what you'll see is you'll see that it documented the uh, the editing of the file mm -hmm. uh, for the student user mm -hmm. and then once the process runs so it's a very verbose log file if you need to do any checking on that now as root if I want to view uh, the cron tab file of another user so remember it's cron tab minus L but then we can use the minus U and say student and I can see the cron tab file for students as root if I wanted to uh, remove the cron tab file for a particular user uh, I would be able to do that uh, as well. So cron tab minus R for user student. That should remove that cron tab file. And so now when I list the cron tab file, it says that there is uh, no cron tab file. So really, I mean, cron tab minus E, if you have any issues with the syntax, uh, you can check out uh, man5 cron tab uh, from a security standpoint, okay? Uh, the default is to have a cron deny file, which is an empty file. If you stay with that, everyone you want to exclude from using cron, you're going to put in the cron deny file. If you create a cron.allow file, then that will require you to populate that file with the users that you want to be allowed to use cron. Uh, otherwise, it will override the, the allow file. Would, the existence of the allow file will override any information that might be in the uh, in the deny file. So. Uh, pretty straightforward. I don't think there's really a whole lot else uh, to cron. Uh, cron tab minus E, <laughs> cron tab minus R, cron tab minus L to list the cron tab file. And then we also have those uh, system uh, directories as well. Uh, same thing with that. Uh, at's a very uh, straightforward service. Don't forget to confirm use system control to confirm that the service is running and also confirm that the service is uh, enabled and therefore participating persistent starts so hopefully that helped um, certainly if you have any questions uh, throw me an email if you like the video uh, throw me a like if you like my content uh, absolutely feel free to subscribe and we'll see you back for the uh, next tip